I hate to break this to you, but Sims Let's Plays aren't dead. If you're having problems getting people invested and watching your videos, your content is boring, plain and simple. It isn't YouTube's fault or the mean biased algorithm. If you aren't growing in the way you want, that's totally 100% on you and your content. Once you accept this as fact and decide you want to change, we can move on to how I can help you get the success you want. If you want to live in a fantasy world that it's everyone else's fault other than your own, then I can't help you. There are only two things that YouTube wants, and if you can give YouTube that, you will grow. If you're watching this video, you probably made it here because your YouTube channel is not doing so well. Believe me when I say I know how that feels and I've lived through it. I've made content on YouTube since 2014. I've made all the mistakes in the book and learned from them. I've dedicated years of my life to scouring YouTube guru videos trying to understand the platform and the algorithm, demonetization policies, secrets, tricks, anything and everything that could give me a leg up. And the real hard pill to swallow was that my content was bad. Sure, I had hundreds of amazing ideas that got me lots of views initially, but that would soon drop off because I had nothing to sustain my audience with. I fell into the mediocre content trap and I'm sure you have too. If you aren't sure if you are in the mediocre content trap, ask yourself this question. Could someone brand new to YouTube easily make the same content you are making? I'm pretty sure the answer is yes if you are honest with yourself. Generic Let's Plays take almost no effort to make and anyone can make a legacy challenge or a Sims Let's Play showing off the features in a new pack. And that's where the problem lies. Everyone does it and the cream rises to the top and the rest sinks. The only people who can still do that are the bigger simmers who have droves of rabid fans that would watch them react to paint drying. Let's talk about oversaturation because you've probably heard one of the many simmers in this community saying that YouTube is just too saturated. Here's the truth. YouTube is only saturated if you are making mediocre content. Everyone wants to take the easy street and then gets mad when easy street is clogged with thousands of other people doing the same thing. There is zero saturation and high quality content because most people won't put in the effort to make it. And if you want to compete, you have to stand out. And to stand out, you have to take a different path than everyone else. Here's the first question you need to answer. What makes your content special? What makes your content worth someone's time to watch it? Why should someone watch you, a random person making videos and not the bigger simmers? If you are playing the same way as them, most new viewers are going to go to the big simmers because they have high view counts and flashy thumbnails. It is very hard to compete at the same game as the big simmers. They have expensive computers, professional microphones, graphic design artists making their thumbnails, big shot editors. Everything is stacked against you as a small creator. But what if I told you that you don't need all that to be successful on YouTube? What if I told you that you could not only compete, but beat them at their own game? What makes good videos, videos that build an audience and have viewers coming back for video after video is unique, interesting content. It's that simple. People get so wrapped up in having the coolest mods, the most interesting looking reshade, the most realistic looking CC, that they miss the most important thing. What people are looking for is engaging gameplay. You can have the best mods in CC or pay an amazing editor, but if your gameplay is as dry as the Sahara, none of that is going to fix it. Let's change gears and get a real world example of an average Sims YouTube channel. We are going to be using Pleasant Sims as our example today. She has been nice enough to share her analytical data with us so we can see where most Sims channels have problems on YouTube. Just to be clear, I'm not calling Cindy out or picking on her. She's openly shared her information and I'd like to share mine. If you aren't familiar with Pleasant Sims channel, she used to make Sims commentary videos and has moved on to Sims Let's Plays. She said that her Let's Plays were the lowest viewed videos on her channel and that she wouldn't be making them anymore. Now at face value, that is pretty straightforward. They don't get views, so don't make them. But YouTube is unfortunately more complicated than that. The first experiment we need to do on this channel is to check and see if any of these videos are restricted. Restricted mode is a mode on YouTube that limits inappropriate videos from view. It's a mode that less than 1% of YouTube users actually use, but it's a sneaky benchmark for if your videos are being throttled by YouTube. YouTube doesn't want to promote potentially inappropriate videos after all the controversies it has been through over the years. So it has bots that scan your video footage as well as thumbnails and all the metadata to decide if your video is inappropriate or not. Videos hidden by restricted mode usually means that they aren't being recommended by YouTube or sent out beyond subscribers. Let's check Cindy's videos. Just what I thought, there is something that YouTube deems inappropriate in these videos and it most likely has to do with either swearing or the act of woohoo. Both are frowned upon by YouTube and will often get videos throttled. This can also have a domino effect for videos posted afterwards, causing them not to get as many views as normal because YouTube can't trust the content you are making to be brand safe. Now, you might notice that some of these videos hit by restricted mode have lots of views. How is that possible? Well, that's the outcome of having your videos on Reddit and Twitter. I've looked at a couple of these videos and it doesn't seem like any 
many of the ones that were hit by restricted mode have gained more than a handful of views in the past few weeks. That's a sure sign that YouTube is basically sandbagging them. Cindy compared her commentary videos to her latest Let's Play video and basically said it wasn't worth making the Let's Plays, and that's a pitfall that many creators fall into. They see a couple videos with huge views and decide that their audience is that big, and future videos should get that many views, which in this case, the Reddit and Twitter viewers artificially inflated the numbers. Off-site video views are the equivalent of window shoppers. They watch the video and disappear. They get no ads on these sites. They don't subscribe or watch other videos, and as such, they shouldn't be considered on the same level as your actual audience. Let's take a deeper dive into why these Let's Plays aren't pulling numbers like they should. I think the first thing we should note is there was a <gasps> six month gap between episodes, and that definitely would cause viewer drop off. No one is hanging around for six months waiting for a video. Something else to note is subscriber burnout. Basically, as you create content, there is a natural or sometimes unnatural culling of subscribers. After a certain period of time or amount of videos skipped by the viewer, YouTube stops showing them your videos. YouTube wants to keep people on the platform for as long as possible, and if your videos are not drawing people in, they will find videos that will. Now that we've peeled off a few layers of this mystery, let's see what the real problem is. YouTube wants two things from people making content on this platform. Number one is watch time, and number two is appropriate advertiser-friendly content. Cindy talks about her latest Let's Play videos getting 4.2% click-through rate and 10 minutes and 45 seconds average view duration. Now, I hate to break this to you, but that isn't good. That means there is a watch time problem and a getting people to click on the video problem. YouTube says that a good click-through rate is 2 to 10%, and 4% is on the low end, especially for a video that has only been live for 24 hours. Your video usually starts with a 10 to 20% click-through rate in the beginning, and if it drops to 4% that quickly, you have a thumbnail and title issue. Thumbnails and titles are the things that entice people to watch. If you have bad ones, people don't click. People not clicking tells YouTube that this video isn't a good video, so they don't promote it. Cindy, I have some questions for you about this thumbnail. Number one, who is this sim and why should I care about them? Number two, why is there a plate of spaghetti on this thumbnail? Number three, how is this fire any different than any other fire I've seen in The Sims 2? What is supposed to entice me to watch this video? People seem to think that slapping a silly face on a thumbnail is all they have to do to get clicks, and that might have been true a couple years ago, but you need way more than that to get people to click on your videos now. I would say it has become even harder because silly faces have become so rampant on YouTube. Yes, I know big YouTubers do it. I'm not saying it doesn't work, but it is literally everywhere, and the first thing is to stand out, not blend in. Most of these channels got big when uncut Let's Plays were all the rage and have fans that will literally watch anything. Don't fall into the trap of believing they know anything about growing a YouTube channel. If you ask them, they'd probably tell you just to be yourself. What are the most important principles you think when getting sorry, started? Sorry. I think, yep, yeah, you've got to be yourself. On to the watch time problem. Viewers only watch 10 minutes and 45 seconds of a 24 minute video. That's less than 50% of the video. This is also a sign to YouTube to tell them not to promote your video. 50% watch time is the bare minimum. So what does all this mean for Cindy's content? Better thumbnails and titles are a must to raise click through rate. This is the first thing that people see and they are the only thing that makes someone click on your video or not. I would recommend spending more time on better editing and more engaging gameplay too. If watch time is under 50%, that means people get bored and stop watching. You can look at your analytics and see where they stopped watching and see what made them stop. Did a scene drag on too long? A lot of information can be gleaned from looking at the analytics in the YouTube studio. So if you are struggling with watch time and click through rate, what should you do? The first thing I would recommend is having story elements and interesting things happening in your video. Your Let's Plays will get a hundred times better if you have some story and plot points written beforehand. Just a general idea of where you want to go in the episode will be a huge step up from no story. You are creating entertainment and whatever you are creating needs to be entertaining to watch. We've moved well past the let's just play and see what happens style of making content. Everyone does this type of content and to stand out, you have to put in the effort to make something different. The second thing I would recommend is editing. We aren't in 2012 or 2014 where you could get away with uncut straight gameplay. We are nearly 10 years from that time and we are done uploading uncut dry gameplay to YouTube. Now some YouTubers go all out with their editing and some have minimal editing styles. You'll have to figure out what works for you. If you are confused on editing, I'd recommend you check out popular Roblox or Minecraft Let's Plays. I know it sounds weird, but a lot of talented creators exist in this sphere. The trending game tab is also a good place to get insight on what kind of editing is popular. Those videos get popular for a reason, whether it's good story, fast paced action, nice editing, all of which will help you with your videos. I do intend to go over this more in depth in future videos. Now on to click through rate. There really is only one way to get better click through rate, and that is making more enticing 
thumbnails and intriguing titles. I'm not saying to falsely clickbait your viewers because that is just going to drive your watch time and click through even farther down. If interesting, intriguing things are happening in your videos, then showcase them on the thumbnail. Put time and effort into them and think about what would be interesting to a passing viewer. We'll be talking about why 99% of Sims Let's Plays fail next time.